Hey everybody, thanks for all the likes and comments for my previous video, the roadmap for a data engineer 2021. So after that I wanted to do a video which covered all of the real world examples with respect to data processing. Uh, since most of you were interested with uh, Spark and uh, using it with respect to Scala or Python etc. So I thought why not get started with Apache Spark. Okay, so I wanted to go into the core concepts, query plans, etc. and do some comparisons as well between uh, Python and Scala for usage with respect to Spark. So, but for that, we will need a Spark setup in our PC. Okay, so for us to get started and try out all the examples together. So, I thought why not put in a video where we are going to do exactly that. So, we will be doing a setup of uh, Spark in our local machines. Uh, in four different ways there are a couple of other ways in which we can do it as well uh, but uh, due to the popularity of uh, certain ways of uh, executing apache spark uh, code i'll stick to four methods okay so there are many ways in which you can get started with setting up apache spark in your pc okay uh, the easiest way is to uh, download the spark binaries and work with the command line version of spark in your laptop or desktop okay using the command line REPL. so this can be done using a windows machine as well as a mac or a linux machine uh, i'll be showing both the versions uh, or like uh, windows and mac for using the local mode in your pcs uh, with respect to linux i'll try to download a vm containing cloudera or hortonworks distribution installed and do it in a later video okay so for now let's stick to windows and mac uh, the next most common method is to run Spark in an IDE, a popular IDE like IntelliJ or Scala IDE. So I'm going to stick with IntelliJ IDE for now due to the popularity, okay, due to the popularity sake and we'll be uh, making use of it uh, in most of the scenarios or most of our examples, okay, along with Databricks. Okay, so that's the reason I want to set up uh, Spark in IntelliJ. I'll be sk skipping off uh, Scala ID. If anybody is interested uh, in knowing on how to do Scala ID, you can very well add a comment uh, to this video so that I can do a short video for that as well. The third approach would be to get access to the Databricks cloud environment. Uh, this approach is one of the easiest and fastest ways to get started with Apache Spark and we'll be using the community edition. Okay, so there is also a primary offering uh, which is a, a kind of a premium needs to be paid and you'll be uh, given a number of clusters and some extra resources for computing. But uh, for us to get started, a uh, community edition is more than enough. Okay. And the last method for using Spark in our local machine is going to be with respect to Zeppelin notebooks okay so this approach is commonly used by developers uh, when they are working with the Cloudera Spark distribution okay so that's that's the last option that I'll be covering uh, so the things that will be skipped would be Scala ID and setting up in the Linux environment so setting up in the Linux environment is more or less similar to the way in which we are going to set up the local mode in a Mac PC Mac uh, system okay and there are other options as well like using a Amazon EMR using AWS Google data proc uh, Azure HD insight and a lot of other options but we'll be covering the above four options for now okay so let's get started now the first thing is to get the spark binaries uh, you can download the spark binaries from Apache org and uh, use the download link to get it and it will uh, take you to the downloads page from where you can download the same okay so you need to select your preferred version uh, choose the package type and download the compressed file okay so we'll be using the version the latest version 3.1.2 and uh, we'll just also note down what version of Scala is supported for that okay so for that which is like spark 3.0 plus uh, it is pre-built with Scala 2.12 Okay, so when we are doing a build or when we are working, we'll need to make sure that we are going to use 2.1.2.0. Uh, okay, so now let's go ahead and click the download button. 
it should take you to this page and after that it will ask you to prompt uh, download and you can download the same uh, i'll try to download it into this folder okay try to create a folder called spark in your c drive and then download the tgz file the zip file here okay then after it downloads we'll go to the location and we'll try to unzip it okay so what we'll do is like uh, i use a tool called uh, 7 zip which uh, does the unzipping process pretty fast so once the extract is done uh, we'll be getting this folder structure so we'll be having all of the contents in this location so just make note of the location it's in the C drive I've just created a folder and I've got all of the contents here so the area of contention would be in the bin folder if you go into the bin folder we'll need to concentrate on two files okay so one is going to be PySpark and the other is going to be spark shell if you see uh, you'll be having a Windows version as well as a shell version uh, say like if you're working in Mac or Linux uh, the setup is more or less simple where you're just going to directly uh, execute the shell version of this command okay so now for our uh, setup we'll try to go to the command prompt and try to execute the spark shell the spark shell deals with the Scala version and uh, the PySpark version deals with the Python version okay so now we'll try to execute the spark shell command So I thought it would start but now what are the issues like we will need to set the Hadoop home okay. So for Windows uh, we will need something called as WinUtils to be set up uh, for this kind of an error uh, to not to occur okay. So we will need to configure something called as WinUtils. So what we will need to do is like we will need to go to the browser and we will need to check uh, this URL okay so there's a set of uh, libraries that's going to mimic the Hadoop environment in your Windows machine okay so what we need to do is like we need to check this version okay so this version here says uh, Apache Hadoop 3.2 okay so for this Hado Apache Hadoop 3.2 so we will need to find the corresponding version so we will try to get the 3.2 version or 3.2.1 version what I, what I did was like I, I downloaded the uh, 3. Point, let me confirm that I just placed it in a folder called Hadoop here okay so I just named it as Hadoop home okay so I downloaded the structure here so whatever elements are in this folder will be in this okay so in the bin folder so if you download this this particular folder would be available here that's about it so this is what was expected and you will need to do one more thing what you need to do is like go to your environment uh, so if you read the error it, it's pretty clear if you read the error it's pretty clear so you need uh, it it isn't able to find something called as a hadoop underscore home so this particular environment variable is not set so what we need to do is like we need to copy this folder okay uh, so this folder and leaving the bin folder leaving the bin folder you will need to set be careful that uh, you leave the bin folder okay I'm reiterating that point for a reason because whenever you execute something uh, in uh, spark uh, the Hadoop home environment variable will be appended with the bin folder okay so the thing that you need to do is like I'll try to set it in my system variables if you do not have access for your system variables you need to set it in your uh, user variables okay so what I'm going to do is like name it Hadoop underscore that's it that's about it okay and once you set it you don't even need to add it to your path okay so uh, now if you go ahead and so the the catch here is this will not work here i'll tell you why okay okay i'll show you why so if you execute spark shell what happens is like it will again check the environment variable whether it is set okay so once it is able to find that particular folder what happens is like uh, now the code will start working so now it has uh, identified the location 
and it is able to do that oh no no so the reason why it's not done is like you'll need to restart your command prompt as usual as usual stuff right when you set the new environment variable you need to refresh your um uh, what do you say uh command prompt okay so i'll go to that folder uh so where did i put it so it should be in spark go to spark go to the bit directory cmd spark share hopefully this should work now since we've set up the environment variable so don't be puzzled if you are uh, facing an issue immediately uh, after setting the environment variable you'll need to restart your command prompt okay that's the default uh, behavior cool now we've got the code or we've got the environment set up awesome so i'll try to execute a basic level of code which i have handy i'll try to just put in this piece of code uh, just a simple rtd with a set of five elements okay uh, so this error keeps coming in windows okay so just to ignore that and paste your values here okay edit if paste doesn't work you can just do so first rdd is created so this is how an rdd is created so you have the type a parallel collection is created and you have parallelized it with a list of integers okay so uh, first rtd is created in our environment then this is just a transformation and when you do a collect it's called as an action okay so let's try to do a so when you do an action uh, the stage is computed so you you saw something called as a stage running it's a very short uh, program so we'll we'll be seeing more detailed stuff a little later on okay so a stage was created so to view the information about the stage what you can do is like there's something called as park context web ui okay so this information here is very important okay uh, so the spark context web ui is available at this location where you can view all of the performance metrics your jobs your stages your tasks every inch of detail can be viewed here okay we'll go into that and your spark context is available as sc and the master is set up in your local okay the star signifies the number of threads that can be run in parallel so it's saying ultimate oh sorry unlimited number of threads say like if you're having a multi-core pc all of the cores will be available for parallel processing spark session is a subtype of spark context which is also available for usage so we have directly used the spark context here and try to parallelize a list and uh, try to process it parallelly okay so we'll quickly go over and have a look at this url and see what it holds for us okay so good so the spark environment is running fine you've got your jobs job was run here you've got your set of stages here so once you click on the stages you'll be seeing all of the tags all of the set of tasks that have run here uh, all of the metrics that are executed for the executor so even though it's a single node cluster or a local cluster or, or a local machine uh, you see a, a driver a cluster sorry a driver a executor all of these things are happening within spark okay so we'll we'll go into these things uh, a lot more uh, a lot more in detail in the uh, upcoming videos uh, but for now just know what is the job what is the stage where the data is getting stored the storage your environment variables your executors so all of will all of it will take some time to load but you can just uh, go through that once you set up your environment okay so all of the properties that have been loaded i showed you right so all of these are available here as well and then we we'll quickly try to print this value also we'll see how many partitions are there okay so we'll see how many partitions are there so after the collect is there we'll see how many partitions so number of partitions is eight okay so we'll see why it is eight because i have eight cores running or and you see the first element is one just a very basic uh, set of operations just to get us started cool then so we've printed out 
each and every one of it okay so just keep this in mind we'll just uh, quickly switch over to the PySpark setup okay we'll close this for now we've seen what is the spark ui and how it's got set up in your local machine you've got a spark uh, node or a, your spark driver and a spark executor executing in your local machine okay now quickly switch over to spy spark okay. we are see, seeing both the variants here okay so that will help us to do a lot of comparisons right we were having some discussions on which is faster which was performing better all of those things will have uh, some work to do here so one catch here uh, you'll need to have python set up before this uh, you'll need to install Spy python if it uh, if it's not installed already in your machine so once it's installed only uh, this uh, particular feature will be able to run okay so just make sure that you install python as well and then you install PySpark. okay so that's understood that if you're having uh, to run PySpark, you'll need uh, python installed okay so as usual our uh, execution is done so if, if you get this message here just a warning here just press enter and it should be gone okay you can start writing your code so the same set of uh, logs or metrics are printed here uh, information about the spark ui uh, information about the spark context information about spark session we'll cover all of these things in detail okay so just go through this for now so now we'll quickly execute a PySpark application to see if our application is working fine. Cool and RDDs. If I try to see what. Yeah, so we created an RDD with this kind of an information. Uh, the syntax would slightly differ for Python and Scala. So that's the reason I have different uh, set of examples. So here again, the stage is computed. Okay. So the Spark UI will not have the previous stage since we terminated the Scala runtime that will be terminated and a new Spark UI session will be available for this. Okay, this is with respect to the jobs that we are executing here. We'll try to quickly print this out. So as you see, this is a transformation whenever an action is called, the stages are getting computed. Lazy computation cool so you've got a setup of PySpark as well as Scala Spark in your machine okay so this should help us uh, in doing a lot of things uh, so we'll try to go to the next step of uh, setting up things using the IntelliJ ID okay so now let's get started with setting up your Scala application or your Spark application in IntelliJ I've got the ultimate version uh, you can also try it with the community edition uh, uh, a pointer here uh, in my video okay like there's a setting up video uh, with respect to Scala so there's a setting up video called setting up Scala with IntelliJ you can find the installation starting up instructions with respect to IntelliJ uh, like downloading the community edition and getting started with it uh, the logic some core logics like running the Scala REPL like uh, uh, setting up a basic application using scala installing scala plugins and like sbt etc all of those are shared in another video i'll be giving a small hint or a pop-up which you can go through in detail that's a like 15 20 minute video which covers a lot of things in detail uh, i'll try to cover a small highlight or a small portion of it in uh, this piece of code here okay so what i'll do is like i'll try to go over uh, step by step now but if you want more detail you can go through that video that's what i wanted to convey now okay so for creating a spark project uh, in intellij uh, you'll need to use something called as a scala build tool okay uh, so we'll, we'll go over that in detail uh, we'll first verify if uh, the scala plugin is installed uh, just for verification case like i you see that my scala plugin is installed uh, just type it out here and verify that it's installed. You can install Scala format as well. And I also want you to install something called as an SBT executor. Okay, so an SBT executor, what is this plugin used for? Is like it gives you a very simple interface, a compile, a clean, and a test. Okay, so where you can compile your uh, Scala code uh, like using Spark dependencies. Uh, 
uh, test it out or even run it okay so just a three way usage okay i'll also give you some details on how to run a spark uh, or a scala build tool using the command line but if you use this uh, tool or this plugin it's pretty easy so try to get these three installers sbt executor scala and scala format so all of these three things are of primary importance okay so now these things are installed we'll just click cancel i'll try to go over and create a new project now so when you want to use spark okay you need to use something called a scala build tool okay if you're just building a scala application an idea version would do because you're not going to deal with much of dependencies uh, if you're only going to work with uh, like the scala library this thing should do but if you're going to refer some uh, libraries from another framework say spark or, or kafka or anything like that if you want to build something based on another framework you need scala build tool scala build tool or a simple build tool is nothing but it is similar to gradle or maven in java okay okay it's just a build tool where you're going to collate all of your dependencies and present it to your application that's about it so here click on this scala version uh, click on a new project using scala build tool and while you're doing this just make sure uh, even if your local setup is not done okay in case you're going to work with intellij just make sure that your hadoop home is uh, set up your only thing the only thing that you need to do uh, is like to set up hadoop home when you're doing it in uh, windows and if you're using windows uh, mac or linux you don't even need to do that okay so when you do that uh, you can go ahead and work with intellij directly okay so even if you do not do the local setup that's that's one thing i wanted to highlight uh, new setup set up spark okay so you see all of these things are auto populated your module name is auto populated uh, just make sure that you select jdk even though i've got another version like the 14 version but uh, spark supports the 1.8 version and you remember while uh, downloading the spark binaries i told you to use the correct version here so we are going to use this 2.12.0 here if you want you can double check here uh, it's going to be 2.12.0 okay just for the safety scenario i'm going to use it you can use uh just refer which uh, what are the versions that support uh, spark 3.1.2 uh, but i'm just going to use a variant called 2.1.12.0 sorry so with this being done uh let's finish the setup i think it should start up anytime now So once you install the plugin called SBT commands, this thing should be set up. And once you initially, uh, sorry, initialize uh, SBT project, uh, this particular window should pop up as well. We'll get to know more of these things. Okay. So this command, I told you, right? So just the compile, test, and clean options are given to you. So if you make any code, you can just use the compile command here. If you write any test cases, you can just do a test or a uh, just a clean and build here just for uh, ease of usage i just use this plugin it's not mandatory but uh, you can use it okay so now let's see the project structure so we created a new project so it has set up properly using the build.spt so we'll see what is the contents that's written here i uh, will try to go in a little bit more uh, so just the name of the project uh, the version the scala version everything is listed out here nothing fancy uh, so uh, proper structure has been created uh, the main for the uh, scala classes and for the test classes as well so what we'll do is like we'll try to create a simple spark class and try to execute it okay so just as we did for the command line setup okay so what you need to do is like you need to right click here and select new so if you do not see scala class here do not be puzzled so these are the things that you'll uh, get stuck on when you get started i've got into these things a lot of times just uh, go to your module settings uh, intellij sometimes makes things a little complex <laughs> so what you need to do is like you need to check whether the libraries are imported see it hasn't imported the scala sdk 
so just concentrate and try to put which version i've got various versions set up here just try to pull in whichever version is going to support us so 2.12.0 uh, so it will ask you whether you need to add it to your selected modules you will need to press ok and uh, the important uh, uh, libraries or the jars that are needed will be shown here just press apply and check the other options as well the modules are there the project is there uh, just check double check if it's the jdk 8 version is here uh, library is checked facets not needed right now no artifacts no uh, builds done as of now sdk just the jdk 8 and the global libraries have been imported from the libraries perfect so this should make the new scala class appear here perfect so you've got the new scala class here okay so i just wanted to do this approach to avoid the usual way like i've seen trainers tell like just import a GitHub project that they've set up already so if you want to do something from scratch how do you do that so that's the approach here so okay so let's go ahead so it will just give you the scala class option here but once you click on that you will be given an option of creating a class a case class an object a case object and a trait so for us to get started with this we'll create an object which is going to have a main method okay so i had this set up so let's see so let me just put some other name now okay say like new object v1 name so yeah so now you've created an object okay so i'll tell you what to do so there's something called extends app okay so in java when you do public static void main only then you'll be able to execute code in that class right so for an object in scala you have something called extends app which gives you this runnable icon so before that it wasn't there so once it's available so this is like the compile time features so as in you type your code all of these things appear so this is the beauty of scala okay so now you extend your app and you are ready to execute code so let's try to copy paste some code we'll see what are the things that's available here the same code okay the same code that i'm going to try to execute here okay so if you see what happens is like i'm going to try to execute it in only one node just one partition one core okay so what is needed is like even though you've imported the scala libraries you have not imported your spark binaries okay so for you to import your spark binaries uh you'll first need to add these import commands but even if you add the import commands those will not be imported for that what you need to do is like go to your build.spt okay go to your build.spt and add these dependencies so the version we are using 3.1.2 and the two features that we are going to use right now the core and the sql versions okay so with the version being like dynamically appended uh, we'll try to add it to the Spark dependencies. Okay. So this is the key point. I often forget this. You'll need to add these uh, dependencies to your library dependencies. Okay. So whatever is in your library should also be appended with these Spark libraries. Okay. So once you're done with this, hopefully this errors should do or should go away. It will not go away since you have not refreshed your uh, project so i'll try to re-import all your spt projects as simple as that okay so once you do the re-import hopefully the errors should go away once once you're doing it for the first time what happens is like it takes a lot of time it takes a lot of time for it to download sometimes and uh, uh, so you'll need to wait for that okay so it started let's see yeah yeah perfect so now it's imported and all things are done just follow these steps in a little uh careful way okay in a prudent way just 
concentrate in these two to three minutes because that might end up in you saving like one or two hours. I've lost a lot of hours when I'm doing the IntelliJ setup, not as easy as the command line setup or the Databricks setup. Uh, just concentrate a little bit here. Uh, just import the libraries, add the versions in the build.spt and then re-import. Just a refresh. Okay. So now let's try and go ahead and execute this code. So before we execute the code, run at once we'll see if it's going to execute uh, we, uh just remember before you run this code you'll need to set the hadoop home okay in your environment variables there is also an option to set it here uh here in this path environment variables but you don't need to worry about it now since we've uh, set it up in the system variables okay so the vm options like when you're using like log 4 j etc you'll need to set here uh, program arguments you can like say any data files and pass it uh, in the command line arguments all of these things can be explicitly mentioned here you can press the plus arrow add values do it one by one blah 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 okay so i think i've covered most of the key concepts and let's see so i just was trying to keep you guys engaged uh so now we see that the server is starting and cool the first element is printed the rdd is executed as usual the spark web ui is displayed here just click on it the the problem here is like when you execute things as a client here uh since the client has terminated here uh, the ui will not be available so if you want to keep that running add some sleep command here or like try to keep it awake okay so try to uh, make sure that it doesn't get terminated okay so when you were using the uh, command prompt uh, the session was awake so you were able to go through these things one by one okay so good job guys so we've set up spark in IntelliJ so this should help us in a long way we can do a lot of stuff together uh, we'll try to I'll try to cover uh, right from the basics uh, from writing basic RDDs, data frames, data sets, then going into Scala test. We'll try to analyze how Spark UI is able to find out performance bugs, uh, try to bring in performance improvements, how shuffling happens. All of these things we'll try to cover. OK, so we'll try to cover this like on like say uh, two to three days once or like in a weekly once manner we'll try to do that so we are done with intellij so the same steps should hold good uh, for mac as well as uh, linux uh, so that's about it so the next step for me is to go ahead and show you how to use the data breaks community edition okay so we'll try to go to that uh, we'll close intellij and we'll try to go to that The Databricks Cloud is currently the most popular solution for running Spark in the cloud environment, guys. So it comes with almost everything that you need to develop, okay? So for that, we will need to try to log into that. Uh, if you do not have an account, you need to register, okay? So let's see how we do that. Uh, we'll just do a sign up. Uh, we'll try to fill in some of the details and uh, create some... stream to learn not sure how we got to this name but somehow it has stuck with <laughs> so the company name type title as I say phone name phone number a uh, phone number like anything can go here I'm not going to give some default number so get started for free so once this is done, it will ask you to verify your email. Uh, so as I told you, uh, there's a free trial available for businesses. Uh, so I'll just go over what are the features there. So it's it's going to have a lot of uh, features like uh, native integration with ML frameworks, uh, like uh, BI tools, uh, job scheduler, unlimited clusters and you can have unlimited uploads etc okay so but for us 
uh, a single cluster node to get started is more than enough and they are giving a generous amount of 15 gb okay and uh, so you'll not be having any cluster implementations which means there'll not be any worker nodes so it's going to be just a jupiter like uh, basic notebook Uh, without any kind of sharing features available but you can just download it as a python notebook or as a scala notebook and share it to your friends or whoever you want to work with to collaborate okay uh, so three users can uh, share it and it's a public environment you can access it from any os okay so that's the beauty of it okay so we'll try to get started with the community edition so we are not going to, uh, going to the azure databricks version aws databricks version or the gcp version we are just going to go ahead with the community version so it's getting it's taking some time to get started so what we can do here so this is the main uh, window where you have all of the things set up all of the things pre filled uh, so uh, let's see what are the things that we can do here you can create a table you can create a notebook you can create a cluster okay so you for you to execute this code the first thing that you need would be a cluster okay so let's get started by try uh, executing or creating a cluster you can import like csv data you can uh, you can bring in a lot of text files all of these things can be done here okay so for some vague reason it's taking so much time let's give it some time so we'll just need to give it a name uh, so i'll just give it my cluster 1 2 3 uh, after you give that name you'll need to make sure that you select an apt version for whatever thing that you're going to try out okay so we'll use the 3.1.1 which is not a beta version i'll always go with the tried and tested version so even though we are using 3.1.2 in our local we'll go ahead with a non beta version here, version here okay so so these are the things that are offered just go through them one by one uh we we'll, we can choose any availability zone uh i'll just choose auto here any particular environment variables spark configurations all of these things can be mentioned so with that being done uh, i'm not going to mess around with these things i'm going to create a cluster uh, it should be up in like around 30 seconds to 1 minute so while this thing is getting started we'll try to create a notebook here okay so what we are going to do so we can create either a scala notebook or a python notebook okay so we can just see a basic version of a notebook on how to create a scala version or a python version so there is also something called as a workspace here so a workspace is nothing but you can uh, i have done some courses so all of those materials would be here so you will uh, have all of uh, the existing notebooks available here so this is me like i've shared some notebooks with some people you can get started here by creating a new notebook by using this command so i'll just go through that again in your workspace there's something called as a shared which will be available to other users which you uh, shared in the past your user account whatever uh, uh, piece of uh, code that you've done using your account so like if i click on this all of these things will be available so you can you can go through all of those one by one and then uh, you can even create a notebook in the workspace pertaining to that uh, but what i'm going to do is like i'm going to do it in the shared uh, workspace since it's a shared video uh, like i'll try to create a notebook here and maybe try to even share it across so uh, the step uh, to create a notebook is as simple as uh, right clicking on your uh, uh, shared uh, tab and just create notebook just give it a name uh, you you can mention either uh, it being as python scala or sql so since we are going to work with scala and python predominantly i'll try to use scala for now i'll also try to create some sql notebooks in the future uh, so uh, we need to mention which cluster we are going to use our cluster seems to be up see it's uh, we've been given two cores and uh, there's a data bre uh, breaks run time of 8.3 spark version is 3.1.1 and the scala version is also displayed here see they are using the uh, version that's recommended for this version here so we can adopt this for our local setup as well okay so since this is not a beta version okay 
so we've got a cluster we'll just give it a uh, my trial as usual so once it's created so it's going to create a scala notebook for us okay so i'll tell you on how to create a python notebook or even execute some python uh, code in the same notebook as well okay so before we do some coding here i'm going to anyways do the same piece of code that we've tried using intellij as well as our local setup we'll uh, try to delve into some details about the cluster okay so what are the things that you can do you can detach it you can restart it you can detach and reattach in case you are uh, stuck somewhere or if some processing is failing somewhere or you want to see the spark ui it's easily available once the cluster is up uh, the driver logs in case there's a performance issue or some kind of an issue which you're not able to debug you can go into the logs and see uh, for a start we we'll just go over and look at the spark ui so if you go into the spark ui uh, so what happens is like it's going to give us details about all the jobs and tasks and stages etc uh, uh, on how they were executed uh, say like there's a couple of jobs that i had executed right now during the course of recording and uh, uh, you can see the stages that they went through and you can also see the sql that got executed so if you're going to use streaming all of those details also will be available uh, so if you see the stages that have been completed for this job and if you click on the stage what happens is like the number of tasks will be displayed see like for each stage there is like around eight. since it's completed we'll not be able to see that uh, it was done some time back so we'll not be able to see that we'll, we'll see that for our, our piece of code that we're going to execute uh, so you can see the details here so how how the tag works how how it gets uh, perpetuated how how the transformations are perpetuated across all of the partitions etc so let's so with that small piece of overview again with respect to spark ui so you sh should be very strong with respect to spark ui if you want to work with uh, spark so most of uh, the issues can be mitigated using spark ui and even if you're going to attend some interviews uh, questions would mostly be about how you're going to handle things at the spark ui so how you're going to handle shuffles how certain things are happening so if you're going to do some joins and all a lot of shuffling will happen which can be uh, observed in the stages part so we'll, we'll go over those things in detail so you here you can see a driver and execute it and all of those stuff okay so now let's quickly execute some code as usual we've got some scala code here is available here. So we'll execute this piece of code now. See what is available. See whether Spark context is available as SC here or it's available in a different name here. Uh, so it's taking some time. It's attaching to the cluster. The first step would obviously take some time. Then if you execute it again, it will execute it a lot faster. Okay. So it's executed successfully. Uh, so it has created an RDD, it has created a, a, a job, uh, see, see like the beauty of uh, Databricks is like you can uh, view these things like one by one. That's one thing like we'll be uh, struggling to see using a command prompt or your local machine. So it will give you certain features like this. Okay, see there's a job that was executed by us even though it's a small job. Uh, the number of stages that uh, were needed to execute that and for each stage what was the tag that was generated uh, it's a very simple tag a simple rdd was generated uh, and what are the other additional metrics so additional metrics in the sense uh, with respect to this you wouldn't be getting that much of metrics but uh, like with respect to uh, if you're going to do some kind of uh, say a join or some kind of a lead lag function or a window function you'll be getting a lot of shuffling so all of these details can be seen here so the number of uh, seconds it took to compute your rdd will be visible here so all of these things can be easily visualized using databricks okay so that's that's the advantage of it okay so for each stage you can view the details okay so that's a small overview about scala and uh, spark ui with respect to uh, databricks so let's quickly try to see how uh, 
we execute some Python code here. Say like you want to quickly do a comparison between these two. Uh, so you can either go to your workspace and create a new notebook and make it as Python and give it another name. The other option is to like just to add another cell here, okay, and just add this command Python, okay. So the beauty here is you'll immediately start working with Python. <laughs> so that's one more advantage. You can work with Python and Scala parallel, okay. So you get to work with both the worlds in the same notebook. That's amazing, isn't it? So, so again you get to see the same visualizations same tags same performance details when the executor driver was added when the driver was added how many stages were computed so that's 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 one thing i wanted to show you today okay so with respect to data bricks uh, so you can see all of these details one by one just go through all of these things how a workspace is configured how a data compute engine is formed, how a cluster is there, what are the details of a cluster, uh, so how you can view the Spark cluster UI of a master, the UI of a driver, etc. So all of these things you can do one by one. Okay, uh, it's it's pretty easy to learn with respect to uh, Databricks because it's more or less similar to a Jupyter notebook, uh, which people find very easy to get started with. Okay, rather than using some. Uh, IDEs, but IDEs give their own advantages. Like you have IntelliSense, uh, you have code complete there, but uh, here you will not find that advantage. But uh, it does have certain advantages, like viewing metrics, uh, pretty good as well. Let's see if, like, I think they have implemented does control space work here. So let's see if IntelliSense is implemented here. It does take time, but it's available here. Okay, so you can make use of IntelliSense using Databricks as well. Sorry for the wrong information. So I do not use that that often. Uh, so I usually use it in my IntelliJ and uh, use it for deploying my applications. I use Databricks predominantly for learning. Uh, okay, since like SBT is needed for packaging and deploying jars in your real world applications. Okay, so this is one more input so let's also see some of the gimmicks that we can do with respect to the databricks notebook uh, we can view uh, only the results or we can view uh, the results side by side with a code and we can also like hide the command numbers we can change the theme here so which makes it uh, pretty good to work on for long hours and so these are um, a little more things that you can play around with uh, respect to databricks and finally if you want to download a version of your notebook or if you want to share it to your friends or if you want a html version so you can just export it using like html export it as a source file publish click on publish and just uh, share a public url which anybody can use it uh, you can share the url as uh, an email or something like that okay so with this being said i've pretty much covered what were the things that needed to be done with respect to our uh, data bricks uh, so now uh, as the finishing part or the last part i'm going to cover uh, the zeppelin notebooks okay so the zeppelin notebooks are nothing but uh, the cloud era version of a jupyter notebook okay now the final step is to go on and set up the Zeppelin notebook so using a Zeppelin but what we are going to be interested is just going to be a local version that we are going to try downloading into a local environment and get started with that it's a very simple binary package I'm going to download uh, the lower version one because I'm not going to use it as my primary uh, environment to interact with spark uh, so there is also a docker image that you can uh, directly uh, import if you have docker set up in your machine uh, just download docker okay uh, uh, there's a list of steps given in this url here uh, once that is done you can just uh, run the zeppelin notebook uh, using the docker run command so which in itself will launch a, uh, launch a virtualized container and you can directly access the notebooks using the below command okay so since i've not set up docker or i'm not going to use docker in my machine i'm just going to use the uh zeppelin variant okay so once this download is done we'll see 
uh, how to do that setup one by one okay so I'll try to download it into Zeppelin create another folder called Zeppelin uh, it should take some time so I'll pause the video till then so once the download is complete we'll try to go ahead and extract the uh, RAR and we'll see what are the next steps uh, it's more or less going to be the same with respect to the functionality like uh, data breaks uh, so we'll see that in a minute uh, so once this folder is like ready we'll try to put it in the main folder as we did previously so that we don't have a lot of folders okay so as usual go to the bin folder so you should be having a command prompt or the command window as well as a shell script uh, you should have the batch as well as a shell script here uh, so the batch is for the windows and the shell script is for the uh, Linux or Mac versions so this should remain the same the working of this uh, Zeppelin should remain the same e with either o OS you're going to use okay so let's go ahead and quickly try to execute uh, the script here so what we are going to do is like just execute the Zeppelin command so we'll see how it's going to work okay so we'll it, it will take some time it will take a long time actually uh, to go ahead and uh, create stuff uh, so like uh, creating a session etc so what does it say it's saying like some file not found it's trying to uh, go ahead and create a lucene index so it's uh, making use of something called as lucene which is the basis for elastic search so we'll, we'll need to wait for a message uh, saying that a zeppelin has started okay so what does it say it says like some notebook is not found some angular distribution is not found so the angular issue was indeed an issue with respect to windows 10 so i had to debug a bit and uh, there's a small solution i had to find out okay so i use stack overflow to be frank and so what what is the solution is like so we had the bin folder right so which didn't have these two folders so what you need to do is like there are two jars here web hyphen point nine point zero and web angler point nine point zero okay so just keep these two bars in, in your mind uh, just copy these uh, so for each of these uh, web application archives create a folder here okay so for zeppelin web point nine point zero create a folder here okay zeppelin web and for zeppelin web angler create a folder like this zeppelin web angler pause the video here and do the steps one at a time create a folder create a disk folder for this create a folder for web angler and create a disk fo uh, folder as well okay and then what you need to do is like copy your vars here okay so the web angler point nine point zero var has to be copied here and extracted okay so there's some weird issue in windows 10 where the extraction is not happening and was not allowing us to uh, start the zeppelin server okay so you need to extract it and you can either keep the var or delete it i've kept it for uh, uh, reference and the same process has to be followed for the zeppelin web folder as well okay so once you extract all of these uh, just go to the command prompt once again and execute zeppelin okay so once we do that we shouldn't have any angular issues and we should get this message so once you get this message that the server has started so uh, the default port for uh, zeppelin is 8080 as with most web applications with uh, which have uh, tomcat as the basis so what you need to do is like go to localhost 8080 and your zeppelin server is good to start so once you're able to see this page uh, you'll be able to go through a whole set of tutorials that are available say like uh, there's a set of python tools available uh, a miscellaneous like there's something called as Mahout. It was an old analytics processing uh, framework using uh, Hadoop. 
uh, there's a flink set of tutorials which was the initial streaming uh, framework before apache uh, sparks streaming interface came into the picture so there's a set of spark tutorials which you can go through one at a time uh, so these are all uh, readily available so like each of these like say will give you an overview on what each of the variables mean like i gave you an explanation about the star uh, even though these are available in the web you can execute each one of these one by one and view the answers side by side okay so all of the answers are given here so whatever you execute can be visible uh, next to it as well uh, so it's more or less similar to the databricks framework uh, and you even have some kind of an execution running here so there's a difference explained between PySpark and scala spark you can see the ways in which ipython is explained so uh, it also helps you with respect to some Hadoop configurations where you are uh, enabling some uh, proxy users. Uh, so all all of these like uh, can be learned uh, in a single place. Okay, so so this is uh, more or less similar to Databricks, but has a few advantages when you use uh, with respect to the cloud era environment, which previously didn't have. Uh, these features okay so it was more or less kind of a closed uh, system where you needed to have a command line interface or an idea set up uh, to work on it okay so this is uh, for people who have uh, a limitation with respect to using their environments like whether they are stuck with uh, either cloud era or like there's also a variation for what and works available so so just wanted to uh, give you guys an idea about what a zeppelin notebook is as well okay so that's it guys uh, we have finally seen on how to get started with apache spark on four different environments using two different operating systems uh, like uh, windows and mac uh, so we have seen variants like uh, zeppelin databricks uh, with respect to the notebook and ide like intellij and then uh, the command line versions which hopefully should remain the same for windows and mac except that uh, for Mac you do not need the win utils okay so the win utils uh, is not needed for the Mac it uh, inherently will be able to locate the Hadoop file system so uh, Spark should uh, be up and running uh, quickly with respect to the Mac OS uh, so um, this should keep us in good shape and uh, help us get started in setting up all of the things uh, that are needed uh, to do the upcoming uh, analysis and requirements and uh, debugging uh, and learning with respect to Spark and data processing. So this should help us uh, in moving forward uh, with respect to our learning. Uh, so that's about it guys. Uh, so do keep uh, liking my videos and uh, provide your comments and uh, recommendations. And also let me know if you want me to cover any more things uh, with respect to setting up of Spark or uh, being be it on how to get started or uh, uh, on the next steps as well. So I have a plan to go ahead, uh, but you can provide your recommendations as well.